So thank you to Global Compact Network Thailand for inviting me. Before I introduce my wonderful panelists, let me set out a bit of the context to the session's topic. So what the finance sector traditionally does best is listening to customers' needs and responding by offering financial solutions. However, when it comes to climate change and other sustainability issues, the finance sector is widely exposed to these risks across the economy. A growing number of banks, therefore, investors and insurers as well, have decided that the only way to reduce a risk which is so high, so global and so systemic is to proactively be part of the solution. They are taking proactive action to engage with their clients on sustainability issues and thereby stimulating the demand for sustainable finance. The objective of this session is to hear about the finance sector's climate action around its financial products and services. For those participants who are from the real economy sectors, I hope the session will provide some insights on how you may want to utilize their products to further your own climate action. So now let me introduce my distinguished panelists. Um, I have Mr. Giorgio Gamba, who has re recently taken on the CEO position at HSBC Thailand in August this year. He has, however, been with HSBC since 2001 and has worked in various parts of the bank in the United Kingdom, India, Hong Kong, and Korea. His last position prior to CEO of HSBC Thailand was leading the bank's Asia-Pacific public sector coverage out of Hong Kong. Next, we have Mr. Renaud Mayer, who is the resident, uh, resident representative of UNDP, the United Nations Development Program in Thailand since 2019. Prior to that, he was a country director for UNDP Nepal uh, from 2015. And before joining the United Nations, Mr. Mayer worked in Tunisia for the French Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Last but not least, I have Mr. Eric Usher, who is the head of the UNEP Finance Initiative. He's been the head since 2015 and led many groundbreaking developments in sustainable finance, including the launch of the United Nations Principles for Responsible Banking in 2019. Eric also sits on the governing bodies of several sustainable finance initiatives, such as the Principles for Responsible Investment and the Sustainable Stock Exchange Initiative. So, my dear panelists, let the first discussion. Uh, so, for the first discussion, I want to pose an opening question on financial institutions as future makers. Why financial institutions? cannot sit back and wait for demand to grow on green and transition financing. So I'll start with Mr. Giorgio first. Um, if you can share your experiences, especially in Asia, of taking the initiative as a banker to engage with your clients on sustainability and climate action, what were, the, what were some of the benefits and insights that you have gained? Everything. Thank you, thank you. Uh, perhaps I might find it useful to set a little bit of context here. So in October 2020, HSBC set out our net zero ambition by aligning our own operations to net zero by 2030 and our financed emissions to net zero by 2050. This also included a commitment to provide between 750 billion and 1 trillion US dollars of sustainable finance and investment by 2030. We also set up a JV with a specialist climate change advisory and investment firm, Pollination, with the aim of becoming the world's largest manager of capital invested in natural resources. In May this year, we published our resolution on climate change, which sets a leading standard for the financial services sector as we look to collectively tackle climate change in partnership with our clients. Around COP26 later this year, we will also publish our short and medium term targets that are consistent with net zero outcomes by 2050. We believe we have the scale and global reach to play a leading role uh, in advising them on their journey to net zero. HSBC is incredibly proud of the 
leading role we've taken as a supply and provider. I'm very proud of the recognition that we've received in 2019 and 2020 from Euromoney as the world's best sustainable bank. However, as you know, achieving net zero requires significant changes, and the financial services industry has an important role in ensuring that capital is allocated to support projects and investments needed to fulfill these goals. The transition to a net zero economy is the key to unlocking term sustainable growth, protecting the financial system, as you said, from climate risk and safeguarding society overall. Our sustainability strategy at HSBC is, is a th really a three part plan. One is becoming a net zero bank, two, supporting our customers, and three, unlocking new climate solutions. In doing so, we also want to help transform sustainable infrastructure into a global asset class through the development of a pipeline of bankable projects. Supporting our, our customers is key to all this, since addressing a challenge as complex as climate change requires collaboration. It will require the transformation of whole economies with important implications for the global workforce. It's only in partnership with our clients that we will align finance to the goals of the Paris Agreement by assessing the emission profiles and transition plans at a client level as the basis for evaluating our financing activities at a sector and overall portfolio level. We will work with our customers to help them develop these decarbonization plans. To that extent, we've already sent out questionnaires to customers in high transition sectors, such as autos, construction, chemicals, metals and mining, oil and gas, and power and utilities. What was the point of that? It was really to understand how they are incorporating climate change into their business and strategies. So together we can identify how we can support their transition. For a plan to be credible, this transition, this transition plan should align to the Paris Agreement goal of uh, 1.5 degree temperature rise and not be overly reliant on negative emission tech and offsets. The targets also need to be verified by a third party and disclosed publicly. I'm happy to confirm that we've already observed a significant strategic change among our clients and expect a further acceleration as a result of advancements in low carbon tech, uh, supportive public policy, and an increased appreciation for the opportunities associated with climate aligned economic activity. From a specific Thailand perspective, HSBC is working with all sectors of society, for example. Um, as a country CEO, you should know that my own performance objectives include how I am supporting our customers transition through the introduction of sustainable finance and solutions. In my first two months on the job, I can confirm that ESG was a key discussion point in all our meetings with our most important clients regulators and stakeholders. It really is at the top of everyone's agenda. Um, thirdly, uh, internally, we've established an ESG steering committee and we've appointed ESG champions across all departments to drive staff's awareness and also to lead the engagement with our clients directly. Um, in terms of partnerships, we're working with the Bank of Thailand and the Securities and Exchange Commission in defining a taxonomy for sustainable finance transactions. We've also signed an MOU with the Bank of Thailand to adopt the Sustainable Banking Guidelines for Responsible Lending. And we're also part of the Bank of Thailand's Working Group on Sustainable Finance to support the Thai economy in achieving the UN SDGs and carbon emission reduction targets. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Giorgio. So just to quickly recap, so Working at the portfolio level, you are drilling down to the sectorial level and then to the client level. And um, what's very encouraging is, is to hear that you are helping a lot on your clients with technical innovation, business strategy, innovation, and, um, and that you are leaving aside carbon capture and negative emission technologies for now, which, is, which sounds very good. Um, it's really, uh, encouraging to hear that your own performance indicators also are reflective of the, the, the HSBC's performance in ESG. Um, I think that that is a growing trend that we are gradually seeing in this uh, across the banks around the world, but uh, I see that HSBC is leading that as well. Um, and I think one of the biggest uh, trends that you are leading on, and we see a lot of other banks following, 
is that the ESG experts are no longer confined to a risk management department and that they are now across the organization, which means that you've done a lot of work um, in building that capacity within your bank within a matter of a few years, which, which is really remarkable. So now let me go on to Mr. Renault. Um, from your perspective as the UNDP person leading the integrated financing framework for Thailand, um, what is, what, how do you see the role of financial institutions uh, within the framework? What are the relations and interaction between the finance sector with the real economy, uh, businesses and individuals and the policymakers and regulators. Over to you. Thanks. Thanks very much, Yuki and uh, Savadikap, everyone. A pleasure to join you this afternoon uh, for this uh, second part of the uh, of the summit of the forum. Uh, and thanks, uh, the Global Compact, for for inviting us. Um, indeed, I mean, the, the, you know, the two key, uh, very loud and clear messages that we are hearing since this morning, uh, from the Prime Minister to all the business leaders. Um, the first one is is the urgency and the importance of action and right, on, on addressing the climate crisis. Um, and, and the second one that also comes clearly is is how uh, it is now well understood that it is you know it is it is only a partnership of actors uh, that is going to make it happen. Right? And, and and in a way, you know, we all depend on each other. Um, a single actor. Uh, and we've just heard, uh, you know, uh, Giorgio talk to us about HSBC. Irre irrelevant how committed HSBC would be, right? If they are alone in this, um, they would face so many hurdles in in making all this happen and translate this into very concrete, um, you know, results and 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 have impact um, at at the level of a country or or, or even beyond given the, the global reach of, of HSBC. So this illustrates the importance also of, of urgent action together. And, and, and these are really uh, three, I think, key words that, that we're hearing this morning. Okay, okay. so, so I, I, hope I hope that, that everyone, everyone has, has already heard, heard Mr. Giorgio speak, speak and, and we will, will now be moving on, on to, to Mr. Mr. Renault. Renault. So, so for him, him uh, what, what I've been, been asking, asking him to talk about, about is, is the, the role, role of financial, financial institutions from, from the integrated, integrated financing framework perspective. perspective. So, so how, how does the framework see the relationship, the relationship and the interaction between the finance sector and the real economy, economy such, such as businesses, businesses and, and individuals and policy and regulation? So, so over to you, Mr. Ren Renal. Thank you, Yuki. Yeah, yeah, I just, just hope that, that uh, we're, we're back. back. It seems that that's our technical, Our technical friends, friends at, at uh, the, the booth, booth are still, still encountering, encountering difficulties. difficulties. If you can get, get in the in chat, chat box, box uh, status. status. I think you're okay. back on I think we're, we're, we're back. back. So, so very, very good. good. Uh, thank, uh, thank you so, so much, Yuki, and, and, and Savadi Kap to all, all the participants. And, uh, and uh, thank, thank you for having you and me as part of this panel. The uh, yeah, question, question that, that Yuki is asking, asking about, about the integrated the national, national financing framework, framework you know, in, in a way, way responds to the two key messages, messages that we have been hearing uh, since, since this morning, morning uh, from, uh, from the Prime, Prime Minister, Minister himself to uh, the many, many business, business leaders and, and, and government, government officials that have, have taken the floor. And the, and the first message is, of course, an acknowledgement, a loud and clear acknowledgement of the importance of of, of uh, urgent, urgent action, action to address uh, the climate crisis. And we have been given many examples of, of why this has to happen now and not be further deferred. And the second key message uh, that has been, in a way, the underlining principle of, of a lot of the contributions we've heard is that alone, no one can really make an impact, that it takes the actions of all the players to, uh, to really ensure that things are going to move forward and that we will see a different future. This is uh, uh, being clear, again, articulated by, uh, by Georgia from HSBC, right, where we have a, you know, a global bank 
having a very intensive list of, uh, of activities and, and, and action from uh, corporate interventions with their clients all the way to uh, the individual performance of the CEO, right? I mean, very impressive. Uh, but again, I mean, the fact is we cannot uh, combine, you know, all those actions and of course, a coordinated fashion uh, impact will be significantly reduced. And this is the purpose of this integrated national financing framework. It is a tool that UNDP alongside other UN agencies is being advocating and promoting for member states to adopt. And we have received from, uh, from Thailand a positive and, uh, uh, feedback, a green light from uh, Minister Akorm from the, the Ministry of Finance to move ahead. And a joint task force has now been established with his team to push this. So the concept is fairly simple. It's the concept of the tower control in an airport where you give you know, the Ministry of Finance a, uh, the information, the tool to uh, uh, first have a well-informed uh, landscape of uh, what is happening. Um, so financial flows that would be directed uh, both from international partners to also domestic partners from uh, the private sector all the way to the public sector and all those financial flows that are directed towards um, various sustainable development issues, including climate, will be able to serve um, as the foundation of any decision making that the ministry and other you know, key partners like the central bank or, or like even to some extent uh, the parliament when it looks at the national budget uh, during its annual exercise, you know, would need to inform their decision. So a very important tool um, that we need to further, you know, uh, explain and advocate because, uh, you know, the, 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 the many uh, tools, for example, that Georgia articulated uh, would need to find their right space in this framework so that we can really leverage you know, to the maximum uh, individual measures of a, an organization uh, or of a ministry uh, or of a development partner to Thailand. So this is happening, um, uh, you know, close to 20, 30 countries around the world are, are currently uh, making progress. And, and we see this as an important contribution uh, to rally uh, all the, uh, you know, like-minded actors around climate action to really, um, make it in, an e in, in a way easier for uh, a government to uh, take stock. So really clarify the landscape uh, and then start uh, coordinating and facilitating uh, through policy dialogue, a lot of those measures that are being announced by different actors. So that's Yuki in an essence, the, uh, the purpose of the INFF. Um, and I, what I really also wanted to, 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 to add just in a few seconds is is uh, you know building on, on, on Georgia's presentation is is to really show how today it's not only about waiting for somebody to ask right and I and I think that's a very important mindset that we want everybody to to have today is is to really consider all of us irrespective of the nature of, of who we are in terms of organization not as just kind of spectators to a crisis that's unfolding with dramatic impact on everyone but really to consider ourselves all actors and ideally champions. And I think, you know, in, in a way, HSBC is, is, is showing a clear uh, championship approach to it, where it's uh, a tailoring by listening to its customers, you know, what is best, but also providing incentives, right? And, and the role of the financial sector in, in that part is, is not only to respond to a demand, but I think also to today very much provoke a demand by providing incentives to their clients and in a way guiding, you know, the, um, their, their clients, and their partners towards uh, a better corporate stand and, and a stronger proactive positioning vis-a-vis -vis climate action. I, but I'm sure Eric uh, will, will, will develop this further uh, through the, the, the finance initiative of, of our sister agency, uh, the UN Environment Program. Back to you, Yuki, thanks. Thank you, Mr. Reno. So just to recap, um, I really liked your summary of this morning's sessions, the three words that you summarized really succinctly, which is urgent action together. And I, I think the INFF, you've explained very clearly that it really shows the interdependence 
between the different actors in Thailand and 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 globally, um, and that it helps to. It, it's a very useful framework for the government to clarify the landscape. It's a very complex landscape of clarifying that landscape and to coordinate in the most efficient way, and to help individual actions um, to be most efficiently impactful. Um, I like the the the. the I resonate with what you were saying about everyone taking action from where they can, and that each one is a champion um, from from their positions. So now, um, thank you, Mr. Renault, for introducing Eric. So uh, I will quickly introduce his question. So, Eric. Uh, if you can introduce the UN principles for responsible banking, which I touched on very briefly at the beginning, how banks are around the world are taking proactive action by aligning their strategy, business strategy with the SDGs and the Paris Climate Agreement. Why would they do that? And uh, what are the, the pressures that they are faced with? And how, how does the principles help? Thank you. Great. Well, well, thanks very much, Yuki, and, and a pleasure to be with uh, Global Compact uh, Network Thailand uh, and with Giorgio and, and Renault for, for the session today. Um, and thank you, Yuki, for, for summing up. I'm very happy to hear about Giorgio's comments, in, you know, including how HSBC is really embedding sustainability at the heart of its business in Thailand. Um, and also, I think the, the um, you know, UNDP from Renault, the efforts to work with governments to align things on the public side. So we have both, both parts moving. Um, you know, the, the, the concept of in managing environmental and social is not new to banks. Banks have been putting in place systems to manage these risks for, for decades. Um, I think what's really changed since 2015, um, for the first time, banks have realized that these issues are becoming more of a strategic um, uh, challenge and, and value to the organization. So it's not only about identifying the transactions or the partners that you should not be working with who, who pose specific environmental social risks, but it's also begging the question, all, all of the business of the bank, is it aligning with societal objectives? Uh, this is what led to a group of 30 banks to, to draft with the UN, the UN principal bank banking, which were launched two years ago in New York by UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres and 132 banks. Um, and these banks are not so much a risk framework, alignment framework, basically, which uh, has six principles, starting with the first of alignment, how aligned or I, I commit to align the, the business of my bank to the needs of society as expressed by the UN Sustainable Development Goals, the Paris Agreement relevant frameworks. Um, today, the PRB is signed by uh, 250 banks from 69 different countries, representing about 40% of global banking assets and serving a little over 1.6 billion people. So it's, it's a big group. Um, you know, the banks have, have signed up to this framework because the PRB, PRB um, is, is a framework for alignment to society, which increasingly is seen as good business. It's good corporate citizenship. I think many banks also understand that the business models of our, of our economies are quickly changing. You know, at first it started to happen in the energy sector and continues to happen, but then very quickly the transportation sector. Today we're looking at new technologies in the food sector and how we produce cement and steel. Everything is being examined. And um, Georgia, you spoke to that in terms of how you work with your clients when they, they look at how do we face these global challenges and these changes market realities. There's certainly also the regulatory and investor pressure. Regulators, including uh, the Bank of Thailand, um, with large institutional uh, investors alongside, understand that climate change is a threat to the whole financial system. Um, in, in April, uh, the PRB banks um, and other partners have established a net zero banking alliance, which is today nearly 60 banks, including HSBC, who've targeted net zero emissions by 2050, but I think more importantly, have established the interim target, the first one of 2030, and have a time frame now in which they need to issue targets in specific high carbon emitting um, sectors or, or um, uh, sectors that have a high impact or will be highly impacted by climate change. So they, they are on a, a, um, a ladder 
to essentially to see how do we squeeze out these emissions working with our clients? How do we embed that within our organizations from the governance all down in the way that we get the proper alignment that's needed in terms of how we do business? You know, embracing sustainability um, really can be a key source of business competitiveness in, in this transition. Um, you only need to look at and try to understand the science to realize that these issues are not going away. Whether or not there's a policy response, it's not a whether, it's, it's when. And different markets have different um, political realities. Uh, we see a lot of positive signals coming out of, of Thailand today and elsewhere in the ASEAN countries and, and across Asia. And therefore, the dynamic in which business is done is shifting. And for the financial community and particularly for the banking sector, staying on top of that and basically helping enabling this change, becoming change makers rather than change takers is really key. Kassigorn Bank and Government Savings Bank have been the first two banks to sign the PRB in Thailand. We hope that many more banks will, will agree to step up uh, to get on to this sustainability transition and really to help contribute to creating prosperous growth as we go forward. Thank you, Yuki. Back to you. Thank you, Eric. So Eric has um, described the, the principles for responsible banking, which is the global coalition, as it were, of banks that are trying to take proactive action on climate financing and other sustainable finance. Um, let me move on to the next discussion topic. And we only have about uh, 17 minutes left. So if you can keep your um, responses under quite, quite succinct, please. So the next topic I'd like to put through is, so in terms of the implementation of what you have been talking about, uh, Giorgio, about how, how does the HSBC business strategy actually um, are implemented in Thailand? Sure, thanks, Yuki. Um, look, apart from implementing the, 20, the, the May 2021 resolution that I mentioned earlier, I would also highlight the following. At the end of 2020, we exceeded our carbon emissions, paper, energy, and water reduction goals, along with efficiency goals for our buildings and data centers for the period 2012 to 2020. We have also embedded HSBC's climate ambition that I referenced earlier as one of the bank's four strategic pillars. We have introduced our future skills program to our employees in order to equip, with, equip them with the necessary new skills to cope with this period of accelerated change. This program focuses on four skill themes and one of these is sustainability as we seek to embed this mindset in all our employees. In Thailand, uh, as an example, we also partnered with a client to run a campaign to recycle empty drinking water bottles to turn post-consumer plastic into PPE suits for medical personnel. We were joint lead managers and joint book runners for the first green, green bond issued by a Thai policy institution. The proceeds of this were used towards forestry and environmental conservation projects. We also introduced the first green deposits to the Thai financial market for two large Thai corporate clients. The green deposit is the first of its kind for Thailand and aims to encourage customers to fulfill their sustainability objectives by investing their surplus cash balances with HSBC. And we then allocate all funds raised to eligible businesses and projects. In May of this year, we launched our $150 million climate solutions partnerships with World Resource Institute and the WWF to unlock barriers to finance for companies and projects that tackle climate change, like startup firms developing carbon cutting technologies. For Thailand, HSBC is supporting WWF Thailand in the implementation of the forest landscape restoration through agroecology project in Chiang Mai province to support smallholder farmer reforestation efforts. In ASEAN, we recently launched our partnership with Temasek Group to fund sustainable infrastructure projects in Asia, investing another $150 million to finance marginally bankable sustainable infrastructure projects required to address climate change, but which currently cannot satisfy the risk and return required by other lenders. Our intensity in leading the sustainable transition will only increase going forward. My predecessor is an example, Kun Kelvin Tan, has been appointed our, as our head of sustainable finance and investment for ASEAN. And he will actively be working with regulators and clients across ASEAN and Thailand 
to drive sustainable finance in the region. We're also currently working with one of our clients to introduce a sustainable supply chain financing program to finance the purchase of their raw materials. Through this program, the borrowing cost will be reduced if the client meets their sustainability KPIs. Also, through our global markets business, we offer ESG-linked hedging solutions to incentivize our customers' achievements of their ambitious, predetermined sustainability performance objectives. The client's sustainability performance is measured using sustainability performance targets as set against KPIs, which measure the improvement in the client's sustainability profile. Once the sustainability performance targets are met by the client, HSBC will provide a price incentive to the hedge. Uh, these are just some of the things that we're doing, uh, which I hope give you a good, a good sense of uh, how we're hoping to drive this very important agenda forward in partnership with our clients, as mentioned before. Thank you, Yuki. Thank you very much. That was a really wide range of, of green, sustainable financial products and services that, that you are offering in Thailand and in ASEAN from green bonds, uh, sustainability link loans, uh, infrastructure funds, partnership funds. Yeah, very exciting. Thank you for sharing. So let me now turn to Mr. Renard and um, maybe if you can comment about how these financial actions uh, and the development of new sustainable financial products and services in sustainability uh, could be best aligned to government plans and make it, make it the most impactful over to you. Uh, thanks, Yuki. In, indeed, I mean, I was, I was just listening and, and almost being overwhelmed by, by the list of, uh, of action that Giorgio is, is, is indicating. And it's such a good example because, you know, what, 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 we, what we see is, is uh, you know, is, is more and more um, economic actors, right? Uh, who uh, who have long been uh, uh, finger pointed as as culprit, right? Of, of of a lot of the impact, the negative impact on our environment, uh, you know, have completely turned around and 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 now are are shifting and 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 really showing a genuine commitment because I think the understanding that underpins this shift is 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 profound and 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 they've seen, you know, uh, when you talk to farmers in a local community in in, in Chiang Mai. Or in the Chao Phraya River Basin, and, and you you ask them about the impact of climate, you know, very often they're not coming up with scientific and and, and science based uh, you know analysis. They are just telling you that uh, level of water and 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 the, the 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 rain patterns has completely changed and it has a direct negative impact on the yield of of, of their products. And 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 so it's it's really. You know, at, at each level of society, every single actor, uh, irrespective, you know, of, of their position and of their level of education, and and even on 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 their position, you know, on, on the decisions that affect them, um, you know, should feel um, compelled to to really take action. And so it's re it really goes down to the individual and and the individual mindset. And what what Georgia was articulating was that. A really a very nice mix of, of policies that are being taken you know at the level of the board of, of the bank but also on clear indication on what individual employees of the bank are expected to do um, and this is the message that we try to convey also uh, you know to the whole range of actors with which we interact uh, with who we interact in, in in the context of our work so from you know the top level decision makers at, at policy level in government and, and and UNDP provides technical assistance on on you know reporting on requirements as uh, for Thailand as a as a as a as a, as a, as a signatory you know of the Paris declaration for example so you know really you know technical and scientific and, and policy level work but at subnational level with the local communities also you know arguing and advocating for climate action of the type of adaptation work that really helps uh, locally, you know, to, to address some of the negative impacts. And, and, and very often, you know, financing is required uh, to, to, to implement those activities. So you need to uh, identify them, but then also help the local community, you know, uh, find a financing source for them. So sometimes 
you know, the government is there with, with incentive programs and support and grants, uh, but very often, especially if it's an economic actor, you know, you need to rely on, on both government uh, financial institutions, but also commercial banks. So the, the, the more actors, you know, similar to what HSBC has just presented as doing, we're going to be able to find not only in the, you know, I would call HSBC, you know, those sophisticated global banks uh, that probably were the first ones among uh, Eric's list of uh, signatories to the principles, right? But we also need to bring this down at national and local level so that all actors in a given country uh, really, you know, appreciate the need to do the same. And, and it, it's not about, you know, competing, although obviously, you know, uh, there, there is a sense of competition, which we welcome because it pushes the bar always further, right, in terms of individual commitments. And, and therefore, for us as, as development partners, it's important that we highlight, you know, the good practices that we see and we collect them from around the world through our networks and we share them, you know, and this is where a, a platform like, uh, like the Global Compact uh, local network of Thailand is, is is of immense value for us because we can you know pr propagate those good practices and 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 push them for adoption in other countries, but this is really important to kind of link you know vertically, uh, you know higher level policy uh, making that are discussed and decided you know in 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 in, in, in fancy boardrooms. Or, or government meeting rooms, you know, in the Bank of Thailand or in, in, in our friends from the Security Exchange Commissions providing incentives for this, but also all the way down, you know, at the level of a, of a cooperative, at a level of a municipality. Um, and, and, and I think this is where we need to put our attention now, is, is now that we have managed, I mean, not we, but, you know, that now that the global community is kind of uh, convinced of the urgency and the importance of taking action, we need to make sure that this trickles down at the community level, because otherwise we will very soon, you know, hit a kind of a wall um, and, 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 and not be able to really bring um, not only the, uh, the solutions uh, where they matter, which is in the daily lives of the economic actors in a given country, uh, but, but also continue identifying what are the problems, you know, how, how is this climate crisis translating at the local level? So it's this identification of demand and supply of solutions, analysis of the problem that needs to happen. Um, and, you know, so, so long are the days when climate action was considered, you know, uh, something reserved for scientists in, 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 in laboratories and universities, uh, but it's really something that now in a way, unfortunately, uh, percolates in, in every single uh, individual's life in, in one way or another, um, and hence the need, again, going back to the initial point of my first intervention, you know, to have tools that allow this coordinated approach that is multi-sectoral and multi-partner in the hands of the decision makers. Thanks, Yuki. Thank you, Renaud. So to, to quickly sum up, uh, I, I really like the way you describe a very complex, you know, coordination mechanism that you do at UNDP to bring down the, the higher level policy into the implementation at the local community level and understand the financing needs at that level and bring it back up to, to the policymakers and the, the, the businesses. So um, maybe then last question to uh, Mr. Eric, uh, if, if you can then explain a little bit further about the PRB in the actual implementation by the banks. So when they sign up, what does that mean? Uh, how do they implement the alignment that you were talking about? Thank you. Okay, thanks, uh, Yuki. And I think speaking to some of the topics that Renault has raised, you know, the, the, the traditionally banks have been good in getting better at managing risks across the portfolio, um, so measuring, uh, managing and aggregating to understand if there are any large risks the, the bank is exposed to in specific areas. Now, as I mentioned, the, the principles of responsible banking are about alignment and how banks realize this alignment is through a you know, fairly new concept, um, which we call impact management. It's not about risks, it's about impacts. And you know, impact management is specifically about banks making effort to reduce their, their negative impacts and increase positive impact. Um, a negative impact meaning harm to people or to planet created through 
the activities that a bank finances and a, a positive impact being benefit to people uh, or planet created through the bank's financing. So for example, lending in agriculture could have negative impacts in terms of CO2 emissions, water use or, or water quality. But the agricultural sector certainly also creates positive impacts in terms of uh, providing employment, livelihoods, uh, access to food. So, you know, by banks supporting their agribusiness clients to take up sustainable agriculture, the financing can support their impacts to reduce their negative impacts and further increase positives. Um, you know, the measure of success for PRB signatories is how much net positive impact the bank can create through engaging with customers and innovating its products and services. And we expect this new KPI will also benefit the bank in measuring its competitiveness in the age of transition, as I referred to earlier, in the age of disruption towards a net zero economy. So ensuring banks are making a continuous effort to increase their net positive impact. The principle two within the principles requires banks to put in place uh, measures, policies to set targets um, for making material improvements in specific impact areas. And so far, uh, UNIPFI, we've worked with the, the signatories to prepare and release guidance in the areas of setting impact targets uh, on gender equality, on financial inclusion and health, on climate action and on biodiversity. Shortly, we will also issue guidance on resource efficiency. So business models of banks are changing with the climate change crisis with other sustainability challenges on the horizon. And I hope this sort of gives you some idea of how you can engage with your bank to get um, uh, support in making this transition, support in working with your clients to help get them there. I think collaboration, um, it would be really key for businesses within, even within a competitive environment as Renault has described, there is benefits to understanding and developing the soft norms, the basis on which we start to create and measure and, and uh, report on uh, our impacts, both negative and positive. There's no single solution to the climate crisis and you know each part of the economy in terms of the actors and you know across sectors will have a, an important role to play to reduce energy demand to decarbonize the grid to electrify certain processes to to shift to substitute substitute fuels such as hydrogen or ammonia or um, or in other areas so i think this really requires a great deal of collaboration um, working with the science the scientists with the civil society with economists uh, with businesses, with the client, your clients, and obviously certainly with uh, public bodies and regulators to figure out how can we get there together, how can we create the fundamentals and the frameworks to actually create good business, good for our financial returns, but good for people and planet. Thank you, Yuki. Thank you, Eric. So uh, we only have one more minute left for this session, and it's been really uh, insightful. I, I got to know a lot about the INFF and Georgia's HSBC activities uh, in Thailand and globally. And Eric, thank you for describing the PRB to the participants. So I, I will borrow uh, Mr. Reynolds' three keywords, urgent action together. I think that really sums up the, what, what finance sector is trying to do as well, that they really rely on the success of their clients to achieve their own success and survival in the age of net zero transition. So uh, for, for the business participants uh, today, I hope that you can talk with your banks, your invest, uh, investors in working together for climate action. Thank you very much for listening. Daddy Kat.